Amen. Enjoy the good singing this morning. Amen. Again, God bless you. Thank you for coming to the house of the Lord. It is Mother's Day, and uh, I, I'm in always, you know, am I always anticipating what to do on a special day? And sometimes it's different. Sometimes it's traditional. And uh, but I, will, I always want it to be from the Lord, no matter what it is. I want it, this will be the scripture I'm going to read to. You will be the most read scripture, I guess, in uh, probably in, in America today is this scripture in Proverbs chapter number 31. And I, I don't know that I've particularly ever preached exactly on just this passage of scripture. I may have. I don't remember uh, in, in my preaching. My wife could tell you how many times and what messages I preached I pos- uh, because she keeps up with all those things. But I don't remember ever preaching a, uh, you know, a, a maybe once on, on this scripture, whereas I used it as a text for a message. But I want to do that. Uh, do that this morning in Proverbs chapter number 31. Now, while you're turning there, <clears throat> in honor of Mother's Day, I found a few things I thought was quite uh, quite humorous. If I can figure out my wife's thing in here. <clears throat> there are some things about moms, and y'all can relate to this. When I was growing up, mom told me things. You know, mom, mom said things to me that now they don't make too good a sense. And uh, uh, she'd say, if you break your leg, don't come running to me. Well, how am I going to do that? You know, uh, Don't go near the water unless you know how to swim. Well, how am I ever going to learn to swim? But anything, anyway, we, you know, uh, well, your father gets home. And hopefully but it was early enough in the day that she and I both had forgotten it by the time Daddy got home. Uh, but my, my mama raised me well. She, she did a good job on me. No matter how I turned out, my mama did a good job on me. She taught me, trained me up in the way I should go. And uh, just as my wife has taken our children to church until they, uh, until they got out from under our roof, our children went to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday. Uh, it was a known thing that we were going to church. My mama took me to church that way. Uh, it was a known thing that I was going to church Sunday night, Monday night, Wednesday night, and revival times, and whatever else was going on. And I believe that is a key to raising a family today is that we teach our children to be faithful and that we become faithful in the Lord. Uh, mothers have a, a dictionary of meaning, and I've got several of these, so I'm not going to preach to you too long, so uh, I want you to loosen up just a little bit this morning. And so the, the meanings of words that mother said sometimes is different from the meanings of word as we think of them. A dumb waiter. Y'all know what a dumb waiter is? One of them things you put stuff in it goes up by itself. All right, a dumb waiter. Mom's definition of this is one who asks if the kids would care to order dessert. Uh, would the kids care to order dessert? Yeah, that's what a dumb waiter is. Feedback. The definition of feedback is the inevitable result when the baby doesn't appreciate the strained carrot. That's feedback. Uh, a, a hearsay. What toddlers do when anyone mutters a dirty word. What they hear is what they say. Be careful. A mother's definition of independent. How we want our children to be for as long as they do everything we say. Mother's definition of a puddle. A small body of water that draws other small bodies wearing dry shoes into it. Uh, Sterilize. You'll like this one. A mother's definition of sterilize is this. What you do to, the, to your first baby's pacifier by boiling it and to your last baby's pacifier by blowing on it and wiping it with saliva. We had a, we, my wife and I were in revival when Brian was a little boy. And uh, I believe it was he was a little boy. Was it him or Krista? Krista. Krista was a little girl. And she had a pacifier. She had that pacifier all the time. The preacher was preaching. He was preaching about, he was preaching about how that Christians, you know, were in too bad of need of pacifiers, just always having to pacify them and keep them going. And he got in a big way about that. And we were sitting right there on the second row where these folks are sitting. And that preacher, he run down to my little girl, and he was standing there. He just sweating and a slobbering and a spitting. And he reached and he grabbed that pacifier of mine. He held it up like this. This is a pacifier, poked it in his mouth, and he pulled that thing out, poked it right back in my little. That's one of them things you just had to believe. I had to hold my wife down. Amen. 
She was about to have a shouting spell, but it wasn't in the right way. <laughs> uh, amen. All right, let me see here. <clears throat> I've got another one here. A little boy sent to bed. A small boy is sent to bed by his mother. Y'all can relate to this. Five minutes later, Mom, what? I'm thirsty. Can you bring me a glass of water? Mama, no, you had yours changed. Lights out. Five minutes later, Mom, what? I'm thirsty. Can I have a glass of water? <laughs> I'm having a hard time with this. It's funny. I told you no. If you ask again, I'll have to spank you. Five minutes later, Mom, what is it? When you come to spank me, can you bring me a glass of water? <laughs> you got to love, you know, you got to love being a mom. I, I, and and uh, uh, I, I'm sure you can relate to these things. I think there was one more, if I can find it. All right, <clears throat> it's time to go to school. One early morning, a lady went in to wake up her son. Wake up, son, it's time to go to school, son. But why, Mom? I don't want to go to school. Mom, give me two reasons why you don't want to go to school, son. Well, the kids hate me, and for one, and the teachers hate me for number two. Mom, oh, that's no reason not to go to school. Come on now, and get up and get ready. Son, you give me two reasons why I should go to school. Mom. Well, for one, you're 52 years old, and for another, you're the school principal. <laughs> so, it, you know, being, being a mom has its challenges, and I've never been a mom. Amen. I've been a dad. Uh, but I've watched my wife, and, and, and uh, when, I think of a, when I think of a wonderful mom, I think of two people, my mama and my wife. And I have watched, you know, my mama raised me, and, and again, I say she raised me well, and I watched my wife. Uh, help raise their children, and she did a wonderful job at that. And this scripture fits uh, these people today, these ladies today, these women today. This is your scripture uh, today that I believe will, if, if younger girls would try to live up to the standards of the older mamas, I think the world would be a lot better off. Everybody say amen. And uh, in verse number 10 of Proverbs chapter 31, there's a question being asked here. Who can find a virtuous woman? And this is a picture of a virtuous woman. The title of our message is a picture of a virtuous woman. And the question is that, who can find a virtuous woman? And you can think in your mind today, and I'm sure you are, I know a virtuous woman. I just named two that I know. I know two, you know, and more than that, but I know two in particular that are virtuous women. Who can find a virtuous woman? But you know what? The days that we're living in today, that becomes a question that's a real question. Who can find a virtuous woman? Now here's the definition of a virtuous woman. She is one of goodness, one of righteousness, one of, of morals, one of integrity, one of dignity, one of honor, one of de decency. She is a woman of nobility. She is respectable, she is pure, and she has high ethics. That's just the definition of a virtuous woman. Who can find a virtuous woman? And, the, and, and uh, the Proverbs goes on to say this, For her price is far above rubies. That is the price of a virtuous woman, far above rubies. Rubies are a precious mineral. And her price is far above rubies. Who can find a virtuous woman? She will, uh, the heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. 
She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, <coughs> and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest, excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. Blessed, I pray, help us to rightly divide the word of truth. And Lord, give comfort and give thoughts and give thoughts of encouragement to those gathered today. And Lord, as we celebrate mothers today, as we celebrate their day today, God, I pray that these ladies sitting before us today will strive to be good mothers and, and to be good, uh, good ladies. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to give you just a few things this morning on the picture of a virtuous woman. Who can find a virtuous woman? Number one, what is a description? What is a picture of a virtuous woman? Number one, she was treasured by her husband. In verse number 11 and 12, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good, not evil, all the days of her life. That is what a virtuous woman will do in a marriage to her, to, for her husband and, and with her husband. She is one that her husband can trust and safely trust. And I trust in my wife, and you men should trust in your wives and to believe them and to, and, uh, you know, as, as the marriage goes on and it's more trust builds and builds between a husband and wife. And friend, that is something of the virtue of a, a woman, a picture of a virtuous woman, is one that a man can safely trust in. And friend, today, you, you young girls that are coming along and will soon be married or are going to be married soon, make sure that when you marry, you marry a man and you are as a virtuous girl, as a virtuous young lady. You marry them and make it so that they can safely trust in you. So the picture of a virtuous woman is one that's treasured by her husband. She is treasured for her trustworthiness. Uh, she's treasured because she is honest and truthful, and loyal, and then she is treasured for her affection. In verse number 12 again, she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. That is, that is a show of affection when a, uh, when a, a mama uh, shows her husband uh, the affection that, you know, that is needed in a marriage. That is the show of a woman's love. And not only that, but when if you look in verse number 28, uh, number, uh, 28 her Children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also <coughs> calls her blessed, and he praises her. And friend, and men, let me tell you something. Today. You need to praise your wives. Uh, you need to praise your wives. And if you're a young man thinking about getting married or someday will, you remember the best thing you can ever do for your wife uh, to encourage her is to praise her. And to, and, you know, and to try to encourage her. And I've not been the best at that. I'll be the first to admit, I've not been the best at that. But I learned, amen, the, the best thing I can do for my marriage and for my wife is to, is to praise her and to love her and to do what I can uh, for her. That, listen, that is, that is what a virtuous woman deserves. That is what you and I owe a virtuous woman as men. We owe them that because, because that is what they deserve because they are virtuous women. And they're one that, uh, you know, I'm proud of my wife. I'm proud of my family. And, and, and I'm proud of my wife. And but why? Because she's done me good all the days of our lives. And so uh, we see that she's honest, truthful, and loyal. She shows her affection. She loves the man that loves her. You know what happens to a lot of marriages today? The, the men don't love the women and the women don't love the men. And they're just there for a short period of time. And then it's all, why? Because their love is not a true love. But true love will stand many trials. True, true love will stand many tests. And marriage is not 50-50. It's more 80-20 it's more both ways. Sometimes I give 80% and 
and sometimes my wife has to give in 20%. Sometimes I have to give in 20%, and my wife has to give in 80%. But it all narrows down to one thing. You got to love one another. Men, you got to love your wives. You got to treat them like women. You got to treat them like ladies, and you got to love them and care for them. And listen, your marriage will be happy. Your marriage will be fun. If you treat your, if you treat your wives and as, as being trustworthy. And she is identified with her husband. When her husband sat at the gate in verse number 23, you know how he was known? He was known by, by who his wife was. Now, that's the way it ought to be. You ought to be known by who your wife is. And husbands, you ought, uh, your wife should be known by who you are. We should show, try to show ourselves as good examples of how husband and wives communicate and get along together. And now that's the one thing wrong in a lot of marriages. Nobody don't talk no more. Hey, this a couple went before the divorce lawyer. And uh, they've been married 47 years. I'm mean, a long time. They've been married 47 years. And everybody thought that was the best marriage in the world. And they went before the divorce lawyer because they wanted a divorce. And uh, the, you know, the, the lawyer said, well, look, we've got to get this all worked out. And she looked at the lady and said, uh, does, he, does he beat you? No, he don't beat me. Does he drink and run around with women? No, he don't drink or run around with women. Well, is he abusive in any way? No, he's not abusive in any way. And the lawyer is perplexed, and he is dumbfounded as to why in the world this woman was. Does he support you? Well, yeah, he makes a lot of money. We don't have, we don't want for anything. And so the lawyer being perplexed he's wondering why in the world is this woman she's got everything she could ever want <coughs> why is she wanting a divorce he said well why do you want a divorce a divorce after 47 years she said well he never tells me he loves me and so the divorce lawyer he looked at the man and said do you ever tell her she, you, that you love her he said no he said, well, you do, do you love her? He said, with all my heart. He said, well, why don't you tell her you love her? He said, well, law, Mr. Lawyer, it's like this. You country fella. He said, when we was getting married, he said, we walked down in front of the preacher, and the preacher said, do you love her? And I told her I did. And afterwards, I said, I love you, and if that ever changes, I'll let you know. Now, how much sense does that make? Tell your wives you love her, they're liable to want a divorce after a while because even if you do, they might think you don't. Amen. That's a message to men, but you ladies better eat that up. And when you go home, you just, you just walk every once in a while. Sister, you walk up to Max and just look at him real hard. He'll know what you're looking there for. <laughs> what you grin at? <laughs> No, seriously, men, we ought to tell, the, our, our, our women, they, you know what they want? They want to hear that you love them. They don't want to just know that you love them. They want to hear. I'll tell my wife I love her. I, you know, I'm not going to wait 20 more years to say I love you. I'm liable to be the one who wind up for that lawyer and him trying to figure out something. But listen, they, they need to hear those words of love. And, and ladies, I commend you for that. That, that is what, that is, I learned one thing. If I've learned one thing in my 50 ever, how many years I've been married, in my 37 years that I have been married, I got to look for that one, but the 37 years I have been married, if I have learned one thing, it's to tell my wife I love her. I, the, you, ladies feed off of that, men. And how long did it take it to get us through our hard heads that we need to tell our, our ladies that we love them? Amen? You ladies ought to be standing up and shouting because I'm trying to help you out today. You men ought to be up and out of here in a few minutes. You better first thing you better say to your wife when you leave her, I love you. And ladies, if they don't, if they don't, you give them a hard time. All right, I'll move on before I get in more trouble than I'm already in. But we see that, that her husband is uh, loves her and that he cares for her and that this virtuous woman and her husband are, are two peas in a pod, so to speak. My wife and I will sit on the chair, and I, she'll be thinking something. And, 
and I'll, go, I'll get up and do it. She ain't never said a word. I know what, my wife, now we don't do this as much as we did because uh, I've been trying to lose some weight. And uh, y'all have lost some. I found it, so I'm trying to lose it to somebody else. But, but my, I know my wife likes hot chocolate. And uh, she likes hot chocolate, and she likes it made out when, and I'm not made like this a long time because I like to drink it too. But she likes hot chocolate made out of, of uh, uh, whole milk. Not this skim stuff, not blue jaw. She likes whole milk. And uh, I, t- I get whole milk, and I put a tablespoon of cocoa, two tablespoons of cocoa in the pan. I make it for her. And uh, I put a, a, like a two tablespoons of water, and I get that all getting real hot. I put a cup of sugar in that. I get that all getting real hot and gooey. And then I take that whole milk, and I pour in there about half of it. I get that all, all real hot and gooey. And pour the rest of it, get that all steaming hot. Man, that makes good hot chocolate. You know, well, she'll sit there sometimes. She'll be sitting there, and, and I'll just get up and go and make some hot chocolate. And she'll say, how'd you know I wanted hot chocolate? You know, we just sit there and read each other's mind. And, uh, and she'll know when she, sometimes she has to ice her knees down. And, uh, and I'll wait on it because I know what's going to happen. I'll stand up to go get something and say, will you bring me the ice out of the freezer so I can ice my knees? <laughs> See, she knew what I was going to do. And listen, that's the way it ought to be with, a, with, with two people after you've been together so long. You'll get to reading each other's minds and you'll get to reading each other's thoughts. But there's one thing I've learned about all of that, and that's to tell my wife that I love her. And fellas, it's a good thing to remember. And then you say, I don't read my wife's mind like that. Listen, I don't read all my wife, what my wife's thinking. I probably don't want to know everything that she thinks. And I'm sure she don't want to know everything I think. But I'm telling you what, when you, when you love each other and you care for each other, and when you're married to a virtuous woman, then life is much better for both the man and the woman. All right? Number, number two, what is she? She's a good homemaker. Now, this, this uh, woman here in Scripture, she was a very uh, busy woman. She, she didn't just sit around the house all day, but she wasn't bored with her life. Uh, the, the Bible says about her that she, uh, she seeketh wool and flax and, and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. She raiseth also while it is yet, riseth while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth the field and buyeth it. And with the fruit of her hand, she planteth a vineyard. She, listen, she's busy all the time. She's doing something. This is a picture of a virtuous woman. You know what's brought a lot of households down? What, what's broke a lot of marriages up is when, when uh, men go off to work and, and uh, women have nothing to do and they get bored at home and they'll sit around and they'll think up things to do and, and uh, you know, uh, maybe, have, uh, maybe have fantasies in their minds or they'll watch things on TV they shouldn't watch. They watch as the world churns or, or uh, uh, days of our striving lives or whatever. And all that goes on, you know, that, and it begins to build an image sometimes in people's minds. And so the best thing to do is keep yourself busy, ladies. Keep, keep yourself busy doing something. And that's why, I'm, you know, I'm not opposed. My wife works outside the home, and I'm not opposed to that. She's got a lot to keep her busy. And this woman's done a lot. She was in real estate. She buys land. And she and, and it's you know it's, it's you kind of uh, figure if she buys land that she also sells land but then this portion of scripture she buys land she says and that's a good place for a vineyard so she plants a vineyard and she's very busy she gets up early she uh, makes the food she uh, we makes the clothes she just does all kinds of things so she's very busy a virtuous woman is a good is a good home uh, maker she's full of energy and and uh, that's what a virtuous woman is she's a good homemaker. And then she is also loved by her children. Now, I can honestly say today I love my mom. And I can say my children love their mother. And that's, that's what a virtuous woman is. It's someone that is loved by their mom. Now, I'll be the first one again to admit that I don't tell my mom I love her enough. And mom's going to watch this after a while. Now, mom, in public, I want everybody to know I love you. And she'll see this, and, and, and I do. I love my mom with all my heart. She's done more for me than I could ever think about doing for her. But, but they, she loves, they love their mama. Uh, they love her because of her thoughtfulness. Moms are always thoughtful. My wife, my wife thinks of, of our children and our grandchildren. My son will be going off somewhere, 
and uh, he'll mention something about needing some clothes or something, and he's going on a mission trip. Man, she'll get it out, and she'll buy it. She'll get it for him and send it to him or, or slip him some money. My other daughters, they'll need something. If my wife knows about it, they're going to get it. Whether we've got it or not, they're going to get it if, if she knows about it and can do anything about it. That's the thoughtfulness of a mother. They're very thoughtful, and, and they, they think about them, and they'll do all they can for their children. And then she is disciplined in her own life. And then they think of her because not only of her her discipline because of, uh, because of her wisdom. Uh, Mom knows a lot. Verse number 26. She opened her, her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is, uh, is the law of kindness. A virtuous woman has wisdom. How, does, how do you get wisdom? If you're a Christian today, how do you get wisdom? You get wisdom from the Lord who giveth liberally and upbraideth not. That's how we get with any man lacketh wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth all men liberally and upbraideth not in, in, in the book of James. So, friend, if you want wisdom, ask of God and he will give you wisdom. And not only she's loved by her children for wisdom, but last of all, she's good to her neighbors. Or almost last of all, she's good to her neighbors. Now, if my wife knows a neighbor around us needs anything, she's going to go try to help them. Whether it be a close neighbor or whether it's somebody else. Uh, she, she do, you know, if she finds out somebody needs something, she's going to help. My mama, when we were growing up, you know, we were all, neighbors are not as close as they used to be. We'll, but we'll all admit that. You know, when I was growing up, uh, the neighborhood was wherever you was at that particular night, sitting on whoever's porch you were. And, uh, you know, if, if someone needed something, it, it was nothing to go borrow a cup of sugar. You know, or go borrow some eggs or, or things like that, and that hardly goes on anymore. But I'm telling you, we ought to be, we, we, as, we as people ought to be uh, kind to our neighbors. But mothers are necessarily kind to their neighbors. And my wife has been kind to the neighbors and kind to other people. And that's the picture of a virtuous woman is be kind to others, be kind to other people. That's a, that's a picture of a virtuous woman. And then last of all, a virtuous woman is pleasing to the Lord. Very simple. A virtuous woman is pleasing to the Lord. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Verse 30. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. She, a woman that fears the Lord is a woman that is pleasing unto the Lord. Now let me ask you something. Do you please the Lord today? Or do, you, or do you please Him? Are you pleasing in His sight? Listen, if you have the... the the values of a virtuous woman, if you have the earmarks of a virtuous woman, and if you pray, and if you praise, and if you are loyal to your family, or you're loyal to your home, if you love your children, I don't understand this world we live in where mamas don't care for their kids anymore. I just don't understand. They won't train them nothing. They'll let them go any way they want to go and expect them when they grow up to be perfect. And I don't understand that. I was in a, we, in, and I, you know, y'all know I work in the grocery business, and I was there the other day, and this little girl, this little girl was watching me, and I was watching her because I'm just telling you, I knew she's up no good. And her mama was not watching her, and her mama, I could tell her mama didn't care what she did. And she walked by and thought I wasn't looking. She grabbed two big old handfuls of nuts and put them in her pocket. And then she turned around and looked at me. And I said, you can't do that. And mama knew what was going on, and mama just looked at her and shook her head. She put them back. Luckily, they were in the shell. She put them back. And, uh, and her mama just looked at her and shook her head. That's all, that's all it was. I remember the day if that had been me, everybody to know that I wasn't going to do that no more. And it probably wouldn't wait until I got home either. And now people are afraid to discipline their kids in any way because they're afraid somebody's going to tell uh, uh, who is it. Yeah, that them people. And they're going to come stick our nose in business where it don't belong. Well, I'll tell you something, friend. We need to care for our children enough to discipline our children. Moms, you need to care for your children and love your children enough to discipline. You say, well, they're grown and gone. Well, you can't do nothing about that. Hey, Amen. They are grown and gone. But I'll tell you something. You sure pray for everybody else that's raising kids that you know. I discipline your children. Don't be afraid to discipline your kids. No has never hurt anyone. No, don't do it. Can I do it? No, you can't do that. But we don't want to tell our kids no anymore. 
Listen, wisdom, pleasing the Lord. All of these things, when it comes to raising children, all of these things are pleasing to the Lord. It's to, to raise the family well, to raise the children well. And dads, you got a big part in it, but I'll tell you something. Mom's got a bigger part. Mom's got a bigger part because, uh, you know, it seems like they deal with it more than we do. But let me tell you something, friend. The picture of a virtuous woman, you can, if I could paint it for you, it'd be someone that's kind, someone that's loving, someone that's industrious, as the Bible tells us here, someone that disciplines, someone that loves their husband, and I can go on and on. But that's the picture of a virtuous woman. We need more of that in our society today. We need more of that. We need more, more women that love their children and not kill them before they're ever born. It's a sad day in our country. But I'm telling you what, I believe there's hope for America. I believe there's hope for America through, uh, uh, through mamas. If they'll be virtuous women. If they'll be virtuous ladies for the Lord. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. Blessed, I pray. God, we pray we've not said anything contrary to thy will, but all we've said, Lord, we want it to be to thy glory. And Lord, I pray right now, God, that you bless these ladies and men that have come to church today. God, I pray that we would be faithful to you, that we'd serve you. And God, I pray, Lord, for, for women across our country, Lord, that they would get a hold of what being a virtuous woman is, it is and strive by the help of God to be so. Lord, again, we thank you for this church. Lord, how we love these people. God, what a blessing they are in our lives. And I pray, God, again, you bless us together. Have your will and way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm through. I'm done. It's over with.